Yeah. Speaking of uh, cowgirls, we were this fired up. We <laughs> Cowgirl. I walked out to the truck a minute ago, and these two old girls rode up on a horse. We're in the middle of town. Oh, yeah. I, I saw them. Did y'all see I them? Yeah. One of them? Was one of them a zebra? It could have been. I swear. I, I'm, not, I'm not being wild here. One had stripes on it. I swear it was a zebra. Well, right down the road where I grew up, which is right down the road from here, um, there was a girl I went to school with, and they had zebras. I don't know if it was full blooded, but like a zoo zebra. Yeah. But it was they were like zebra, and I think maybe they have like a cross or something where you can maybe own a zebra type of a horse. I swear I saw one walking down the highway. Well, these two rolled up because I was went out to get some uh, stuff out of the truck, and I was like, "What in the world?" And here they come walking through my yard. You never know what you're going to see. Can you ride a zebra? Well, a zebra lets you ride it. I would. You got to uh, raise it from a baby and raise it with horses. Maybe Phoebe probably knows that, don't she? Yeah, that, yeah that'd be one of yeah, her questions there. But I would think. We'll be in Texas next week. We can ask somebody. Yeah, yeah just curious. <laughs> in case a man might want a zebra. I don't know. <laughs> I thought about it. I mean, think about wild horses or Mustangs or whatever. Yeah. I mean, you go out there and you catch one. You got to break it and all that stuff. I mean, probably the same thing with the zebra. I'd imagine so. It's just kind of like a donkey, right? Well, I mean, I'm <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not uh, an optometrist, but yeah, I'm, not, uh... I'm not into cosmetology. But it's it's a uh, yeah. That's I don't it's just know. Food for thought. I just thought that was strange. Yeah, uh, I saw them too, though. I passed them on the highway coming up here. They're wa- yeah. they're on the side of the road. Hmm. They were they were down here on the sidewalk. There's two younger girls. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That that was them. Maybe just out cruising around town. I don't. Might looking, have been, might have been for heading the into town to rob a bank. Oh. Well, yeah. reminds me of that old rap song. Remember that? Uh, giddy up, giddy up, move out. Uh, ghetto, uh, ghetto cowboy. Is that ghetto, what it was? Something yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I remember, but I, it's fuzzy. There was a there was a a time where that was. Will Smith was rapping back in that around that era. I went to the store the other day and I heard Will Smith come on. <laughs> was he getting jiggy with it? In the yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't jiggy do with it, yeah. the rap, so I, I'm, yeah. I'm not hip to it. Well, I had speakers in my truck, so I had to. Did you? But yeah. it was a. Uh, well, I was a metalhead. I was cranking, dude. I I love '90s hip hop, man. Yeah, I can't do it. I tried. Well. We'll break him. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it was, uh, I mean, my dad, he'd just get mad. You need to listen to country music. I'm always listening to country music, but turned six, 15, 16, I got me a truck. Got me, uh, my first truck had, I put one, oh, it would have been like a, a Rockford Fosgate 10 or something like that. <laughs> I had this little thing, and it, you know, we're listening to, uh, Three Six Mafia, late night tip. Remember that one? Mm-hmm. And uh, it had that real low bass, and it's, you see the mirror. And Dad, he said, well, that's pretty cool, I guess, you know? <laughs> that's pretty then, cool. Yeah. <laughs> and then the next, I was like, well, that ain't enough. 110 ain't going to do it. So I got two 12s, 1,000 watt amp, and I blew them speakers left and right. The next thing you know, I ended up with three 12s. Had no business having three in the same box. I just cut another hole. Two wasn't enough. Two just wasn't enough. And then I thought, well, these ain't enough. So I got two 15s. Oh, boy. And that right there. And it was a Memphis 1000D amp. Everybody talked about them. And I found one. It was used. And I found it somewhere. It needed some work. Um, <laughs> but, you, you found know, it in the, in the shopper paper? Yeah. I, I, it was uh, It was almost like, no doubt. I honestly think I found it like at, like at Goodwill or something like mm. that. It was it was on a shelf somewhere. And they, they wanted like 50 bucks. I got it. I went and hooked it all up, and then it blow fused just left and right. Man, that thing was loud. You, and I'd have it cranked. My windows down. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of car was it you had? You little said, Chevrolet, oh, little Chevrolet oh, pickup yeah. truck. And uh, it's a wonder you can hear anything mm, now. I can't. Yeah, me and Crazy Legs about the same. We're no, I deaf. had. Yeah, I had to. My first car was a '68 VW Buck. 
<laughs> and I took the back seat out, and I had I had two twelves in the back there. It was just a big box, so I actually took the back seat out, and it was nothing but speaker back there. And so yeah, that that it was like it was like riding and around in a trash can, just because everything was rattling just all rattling. the time. Yep. But now, I mean, that was the days of cassettes, though. Yeah. You know, so I don't I don't think it was it was pushing as much. But I had a power amp back there. Yeah. But it wasn't pushing as much as like CDs. But man, I was just cranking some Rush. Some cool stuff, you know, like that. I just picture him as Joe, like uh, he's he's Kid Rock on Joe Dirt. Well, like, that was yeah. me when I had my Chevy van. Now after I after yeah. I crashed my VW Bug into the side of a bridge. Well, um, what'd you do that for? <laughs> Hide your plane. Well, uh-huh. Coming around the corner too to fast. You. That well, rain. Well, yeah. when it was a bridge. It was a tiny bridge, and it was a twenty foot drop off to the right, twenty foot drop off to the left. Going into a creek, so I was like, "Well, I'm, we're going to die if I go into the creek." So it was me and my buddy. Neither one of us had a seatbelt on, of course, and so I just aimed <laughs> for the bridge, and so I managed to hit the, the end of it and just hit it head on. Oh hit it so hard I touched my knuckles. I bent the steering wheel and touched my knuckles, and my buddy popped out the uh, windshield with his forehead, and we just laughed. I mean, that's what happens when you're 16 well, that, years old. Yeah, you're a terrible do. car. You just yeah, laugh about you, it. Yeah, I mean, glad yeah. to be alive. Yeah. Then I got my Chevy van. Well, and then I was. There were songs written about that. Yeah, <laughs> and that was a loving Chevy. Did it, did it have a name? Uh no, no. no I, I don't think I was ever hip enough to, to give it a name, but it did have uh, wall-to-wall carpeting and carpeting on the ceiling. Because of course it did. Yeah. yeah. I mean, why wouldn't it? Yeah. And it had a bench seat in the back that folded down into a bed. And so I wasn't ever big on school, so I planned it out where I could skip <laughs> enough out of school. <laughs> And I would drive off in the morning. My parents think I'm going to school. And I'd just go park over at Chester Frost Park and go fish and sleep. <laughs> and then I'd go to band practice. It was my first tour bus. So I actually took that on the road when I was 16. I can't believe you wasn't good in school. <laughs> it doesn't sound like you great. Are. I was great until I got to high school. And then it was just like I, I did everything I could just to fit through the cracks. Yeah. Because I was traveling at the time. I was the only freshman that was probably on the road at the time. Yeah. And so they were actually, the band I was in, they actually had to go to my parents and ask for permission to take me out and so they would they would sometimes come when i before i had my van when i was in between vehicles they would come and pick me up on fridays after class and then we'd go off doing like the frat circuit around alabama and georgia and stuff like that and then i literally there were times i got dropped back off on monday morning going back to class that was before tiktok that <laughs> was way before tiktok <laughs> yeah <laughs> well yeah, I mean, that was, uh, remember. My high school experience was the exact opposite of that. Uh, this might be the nerdiest thing I, I, I'll ever say, but I, Nerd. Had, I had perfect attendance my ninth grade year, my 10th grade year, my 11th grade year, and about a month left of my senior year, um, I got mono. And I don't, I don't know how, but I got mono. Yeah, yeah. you don't and, know how. Good and, Lord. uh, it, uh, <laughs> man, it, it, Caused my lymph nodes to swell in my throat, and, yeah. and I couldn't even swallow my own spit there for a minute. So I got dehydrated. I went in the hospital and spent a night, and I missed one day of school. And I went back to school the next day, and then the same thing happened again. So I missed one. I missed two days of school my senior year. See, and you could have been having all that fun. Yeah, I could have been school. Could have been. I always. I don't yeah, advocate I school. Once yeah. upon a time, I was a kid with the future. I don't. I don't know what happened, but well, uh, we all well, were at one point. <laughs> You know what though? It's it's uh I think that right there, what you just said, perfect attendance. That that goes it, it follows you. Yeah, I mean, both of y'all are the two of the most uh well I mean, kinda opposite, I guess, for you. But, well, hang on, uh, hang on, where's well, this going? <laughs> but now nowadays, like the two of the most reliable guys, you know less is gonna be there and you're literally going to have to be dead for you not to show up. <laughs> I've proved that. You've I? proven that. But yeah, I mean, always, I love skipping school back in the day. Well, I just hate that. It never was nothing that engaged me. And, you no. know, I, I got hurt. I played football, but then I got hurt. And right. so I, I wasn't playing football anymore. And, you know, and ruined your dirt biking well, career. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I was making more money out of school than I was in school. And right. So, you know, it's yeah. just, I was straight A's up until I got to high school. Always had a uh, like in in the fall. I, I played in March in the marching band, and that was always a lot of fun. Um, and then springtime rolled around; it was baseball time. So, yeah. And if you didn't if you didn't go to school, you know you couldn't go to practice or whatever, and miss out on games and whatnot. And so, 
And plus, all my friends were at school and have anything, you know, wasn't like I could stay home, play on the internet all day or anything yeah, like that. So we used to have a place we can go called Jones Creek, which is right down here. You've been by there. Um, is that the one we rode four wheelers down the hill through the. No, nah, it's Trace Creek. But okay. so I had a four wheeler. My neighbor did too. And so me and his buddies growing up, I'd get in fights or something every now and then, get suspended from school. I loved it. Everybody else like, oh, man, get suspended. I was like, I hope I do, you know? <laughs> and so I'd just call up Kevin and say, hey, man, you want to go ride four wheelers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'd, just, we'd just go ride. He had a machete that hung off the side of his. He had a Honda Foreman. It was awesome. Big mud tires. And I had this little four wheeler. It's like a Kawasaki Bayou, 220 oh, Bayou or something oh, like yeah, that. I've seen those before. And honestly, they <clears> wasn't <throat> a great made. You know, four wheeler, it was just kind of cheap and what we could afford. And I had a green one, and Sean, my brother, had a red one. So we run them things ragged. I mean, it used to be a place called the, the Dried Up Pond, which it wasn't dried up at all. <laughs> was it a pond? It was a pond. Yeah. <laughs> but it, was, it would get, in the summertime, it'd get real, real low. So we always call it the Dried Up Pond. So it was just a mud hole, but it had this grass in it. And I remember. Just got this new fool and dad said, y'all stay away from that dried up pond. That's the first place you went. First place I went. <laughs> Kevin, let's go to the dried up pond. I'm probably 14, you know, years old, something like that. We went over there and I run that thing for about six hours straight, just running back and forth to that pond. I mean, I was covered in mud. Just a hollering. That's just a good a, day right there, man. Yes, it was. It was awesome. I was covered and I come back and my mama said, boy, you better get out there and clean that four wheeler. When your daddy gets home, sees all that mud. You better get it clean. I said, all right. So I cleaned it. Boy, I had it shined up, got up in there. What I didn't do was clean underneath the seat. Because, you know, my little 14-year-old brain didn't, didn't think, think about that. that. <laughs> so the next day, I, it wouldn't start up, wouldn't run. I said, Dad, my forward is already messed up. He said, well, I'm going to take it back to the shop. We just got it. Now, you didn't run it nowhere, did you? I said, no. Oh, no, no. No, I just run it up the road, you know. And it was a, uh, so he took it to the shop. And they said, well, uh, dad tells a story now. He said he looked back towards the shop where at the four-wheeler place, and a bunch of guys were laughing. And was like, y'all, come here and look at this. <laughs> He's looking. And finally, the man came in and said, is that your little four-wheeler back there? He said, yeah. Look, come here, let me show you something. He said, did you sink this thing in the river? He said, no, <laughs> we just bought it. He goes, well. Let me show you something. He popped the seat off, and there was weeds, mud <laughs> coming out of the breather box. It had sucked all that mud and oh just my. trashed the whole carburetor, everything. Oh, man. He come home, boy. It was bad. Bad news. <laughs> Don't send him into town to get embarrassed, didn't you? Yeah, I did. he got embarrassed. Yeah. Friend of all his friends. <laughs> well, everybody else had to come and look at it. And I, yeah, of course. It was a, a town spectacle. But uh, anyways, yeah, that was. Did he let you keep it? Yeah. But I trashed, I mean, we... we Still trashed it again. We, yeah, though. we just went... That wasn't the last time you went to the dried up pond. Well, that's what it? you do when you're 14, man. Yeah. I, I had a YZ250. I never had a four-wheeler, but yeah. I had a YZ250. I love that thing. Yeah. I was the exact same age. I was 14. Yeah. You know, before you're able to drive a car, yeah. that's your first real freedom. Yeah. You know, when you can go take off on your motorcycle, mm -hmm. you know, out into the woods, do whatever you want to. Run up down a road, run yeah. from cops, you know. Hang yeah. out in a dry pond. Yeah. I had this yeah. motorcycle... <laughs> But it had pedals on it. <laughs> it was, uh, you know, oh, well, yeah. I had to provide the horsepower, but <laughs> but it was a source of freedom too, man. Well, oh, I did yeah. that when I was little. You know, I had like a mongoose Californian. You know, it was the late eighties. Yeah, that was the yeah. big one. It's the late eighties. Everybody's doing it. But it, I robbed a convenience store, but it was the late 80s. Yeah, you know let me get like, away. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Knocked over a Piggly Wiggly in yeah. uh, Yazoo Every, City. Huh? Everybody wasn't so uptight. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I no, guess that's coach, my point. They just kids. You know? They just kids <laughs> being, being boys. Yeah, yeah. Let, yeah. Him have that, let him have that gun. He's fine. Yeah. He's, which, I mean, I got my first gun whenever I was. We always had, a, you know, BB gun and stuff. But I remember being probably eight years old, eight or ten. My granddaddy gave me a 410 yeah. shotgun. That was my first gun. I think I, eight or nine, something like that, with 410. Yeah. Then I graduated to uh, a pump 410. Yeah. That was fancy. And then uh, 20 gauge and then 12 gauge. Yeah. And Pap gave me all of them. Right. He had, he had his collection of guns, and he'd 
dish them out. Well, this this boy is this old. He gets this gun, you know. Oh, that's cool. It's a yeah. rite of passage. I mean, yeah, it, yeah. it really was. Oh, they wouldn't let me have nothing but a BB gun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, and it was probably a smart idea. You had a van and you wouldn't go to school. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> had my own shotgun. <laughs> Dang. Heathen. You know? Oh, well, Eric, I, you'll appreciate this, man. Um, my great grandfather left me his 16 gauge Browning. Oh, wow. Whenever he passed. And then. Uh, when Pat passed, I inherited his, he's got a, um, Remington 1100. Mm. So I have his, I have my great grandfather's gun, the one that he hunted with Yeah, my grandfather's gun that he hunted with and my dad's Belgium made Browning that he oh, hunted that's with. Not, so I that's got, cool. I got a, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Pap always had a million guns. Yeah. That was, uh, so my grandfather, he, in the last three or so years of his life, he got, he was pretty riddled with Alzheimer's and we, we saw it coming from a ways out because I'd come home from Nashville and he'd say, have I showed you this gun? And I'd say, yeah, I've already seen that one, Pat. Well, have I showed you this one? Yeah, I've already seen that one too, Pat. And that, he couldn't remember having showed yeah. it to me, but, um, we just got together. He passed one day shy of his 91st birthday. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was in, uh, March of 21. And, uh, we just got together last year and, Divided up all the guns between all the grandsons, so that was that was a cool night. Yeah, that's yeah. cool, man. I mean, that's we. You know, we we were talking about this. this Southern is, wealth. Yeah, but <laughs> you know, we were talking about it once before. But remember back then, like the grandparents were where you wanted to go for Christmas, for Thanksgiving, Easter, whatever. Yeah, I mean every weekend. When whatever. I was when I was a kid, we we'd have Sunday dinner every week. Yeah, you go over there and you hang out, cut up with one another. You deer hunt. You ride on boats, and you know we were talking about going shrimping and stuff yeah. and stuff like that. And it's like I remember doing the same thing right over right down the road from here. And it was like every holiday, you knew you went over to Nanny and Di's house, and everybody's gonna hang out. And then later on, after everybody was full. We'd go out in the front yard and shoot beer cans or whatever with guns. <laughs> and it was like, we'd have our dads out there drinking beer so we could put our beer cans out, you know. But we sit and we shoot guns. We did all that stuff. And it's like, I don't know. I feel like, I mean, I could be wrong. Maybe it's just us, but I feel like people are getting away from that nowadays. It's like, that used to be the center of family was yeah. at the grandparents' house. Well, it's easier to spread out now than it used to be. Mm-hmm. You know, those that came before us, they wouldn't they wouldn't go very far. Well, now that's true. I mean, families, I think, were tighter, mm-hmm. you know, and stayed in the community more, whereas yeah. now that they are, they're just going throughout the United States. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what Probably all lived family. on the same road, which was yeah. kind of like... Yeah. Yeah. One generation up from me all lives on the same six acres on my, my dad's side of the family back home. Yeah. My mom's side of the family spread out, but um, my dad's side of the family didn't go very far. Yeah. I think we ought to bring it back. I'm trying. I'm a grandparent. I'm not. Crazy legs. <laughs> Paul, Paul. Yeah, I mean, and that's what I was telling was Phoebe. I was like, I want, when we bought this house, moved back over here from Chattanooga, I was like, I want us to be the getting everybody together. Whether you're family or you're not technically. Blood family or chosen family. Exactly. I was like, I want this to be the house. That's why I looked for a house that was you know, a little bit bigger, had um, more entertaining kind of space. You well, know? That's why it was nice we did that for Thanksgiving. It was fun. Had us over. It was a blast. That was great. And there wasn't hardly no real family, like no blood family was hardly there. And it was low stress, yeah. no drama. We, what do we have? We got a bunch of food. Everybody brought stuff. Yeah, yeah. It was like a potluck kind of thing. Yep. We hung out. We played out in the yard, looked at my Buick, admired it a little while. And uh, <laughs> we... Uh, Sat on the back porch. I mean, it was just, it was a gathering spot. And I think that's what America needs more of. My opinion. It's certainly a cool thing, man. I have yeah. a lot of fond memories of that. Well, now I'll tell you too, up. obviously back then too, is you didn't have, everybody didn't have their all little phones distracting right. them. And, yeah. Yeah. You know, when everybody showed up, you interacted because you yeah. didn't have something that's just sitting distracting you. Yeah. That's the thing about now is everybody shows up, everybody's just staring down. Do you ever have bottle rocket wars? All the time. Oh, Roman yeah. candle wars. Roman candle wars, yeah. You yeah. get you a little piece of PVC pipe. You can get pretty, pretty oh. accurate with a bottle rocket. I was just thinking about that, talking about everybody getting together and 
firecracker <coughs> guns. We used to make firecracker guns. When nobody's had their phones back then, so you'd shoot each other. Yeah, you know what I mean, like yeah. you. Know, it was the it, nine, it was it the was, 80s and 90s. Yeah, yeah I mean, come it was on. the Wild West. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, take, I take Roman candles onto my bike. Well, I'm taking on flying. Did y'all ever do that? No, I didn't uh, think of that. Yeah. Oh, my. Like no. two tailpipes? Y'all never did that? <laughs> no. Oh, my Lord, that's a blast. Oh, no, I can pretty, only imagine. Yeah. <laughs> sounds pretty awesome. Man. Just yeah. go cruising as fast as you can. Pow, 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 pow. Uh, no. Yeah. I never awesome. thought to do that. That's a great idea. I got a bike. A <laughs> I got a bike too. There's a fireworks <laughs> store right down the road. <laughs> Get your bike. <laughs> we'll cut through the park over here. No, we had a. I remember one time mom and dad had a party on 4th, and they used to be known for throwing parties. <laughs> and Dad would come over. He loved it, my granddaddy, because he they would cook a whole hog oh, wow. on a pit. But it was a big deal because you had to get it the night before. And you start cooking about midnight. Yeah, a lot of preparation. A lot. Because you cook it most of the time about 12 hours or longer, 16, depending on how big a pig was. So they, he'd get in there and get a bunch of slabs from the uh, sawmill, get that wood going. He had, my granddaddy had to be in charge. He was supervising. So he'd come down, and he'd sit in that hammock and pretty much just go to sleep. <laughs> no, he was he was just resting his eyes. He, he was watching that pig, and uh, yeah. So he get over and he would shovel for a minute, and then he might drink. My, my granny never drank or hardly. He never heard him cuss. Never nothing. But every now and then on Fourth of July, he might drink a beer. You no, know? oh. and uh, so he might have him one when he kicked back in that that old hammock that was tied between two trees down by the pit. I remember it gave loose one time, and he just flat out, boom, <laughs> laid out on the ground. It was funny. But uh, anyways, he would, they would cook this pig. Well, then half the town, half of White Bluff, Tennessee here, would show up at our house. And I remember some friends come over one time and said, we're going to have some fireworks going on. So everybody kind of pitched in some money. Nobody had much money. We, we all throw in, you know, 20 bucks or something. You really have a nice yeah, little yeah. fireworks show. And Dad, you know, he'd get to drinking. He'd been drinking since the night before, <laughs> so he's qualified to prepping. light all. Yeah, prepping, and uh, so he's qualified to light all the fireworks. You know, and uh, <laughs> I remember somebody's wife come by, and he was messing my dad, and he took a this little firecracker and he threw it, and it went right in her sock, right in her shoe, mm. pow, oh. blistered up that leg. Well, I thought they were going to get to fighting. Well, then it was it was always a fight and something going crazy. Now I'm thinking back, now that I've said this, maybe that's why we don't do parties anymore <laughs> and nobody gets together. And why we don't drink as much. Exactly. Too, too dangerous. But, man, that was fun. You know what I mean? And we always had fireworks to get out, snakes and sparklers, you know, for the kids. Um, but we, we'd shoot them bottle rockets. We'd have, you know, Roman candles. Something would catch on fire. Dogs are going nuts. Yeah. It was a good time. But, you know, when it comes to Christmas and Thanksgiving, any sort of holiday, they all get together. And then at Easter, we would do prize eggs. You ever do them? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So the, the adults would get together and put a dollar bill in one and put a five. Find a gold egg or something. Yeah. And then I remember one time, somebody must have just got paid. We had like a $20 bill and mm. a prize egg. That was the original money. Get this is in the skiing, 90s. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I was like, the oh. dollar meant a lot more. I mean, right the, the cousins are out there fist fighting trying to get that <laughs> prize egg. You know? What a good time. You know? Survival of the fittest. I just, uh, yeah, I think we got to bring that back. That was uh, maybe then we'll do that this year. Another thing I've been thinking about was, um, you know, how everybody's always talking about content. You know, you got to do all this content for social media, and it's like, what's something cool to do? Well, I got an idea the other day. I thought I'm going to go to small businesses. You know, you know, on uh, TV, Dirty Jobs. You ever seen that show? I love it. Yeah, I do same. too. What about doing it on a local level and just go around to like. Cool little places that are kind of mom and pop owned, or like go and shine a little light on them. So you want yeah. to hire us out as free labor? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody making. I, I've lost money on this whole deal. Wouldn't that be fun? Just yeah. go around in places, and while we're on the road, find yeah. cool stuff to do. Just talk to people. Huh? Yeah. So if you're listening to this, you know of a cool mom and pop kind of store or a coffee shop or a little cool restaurant or whatever. If we have, you know, wherever you at, just tell us. Where that would be, if we happen to be going through, maybe we can go check it out and do a little thing, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, support a little local business. Yeah. And- 
shine a little light well, on plus it. It's we also, got a camera, man. Plus, mm-hmm. it's also cool just to see. We go to a lot of places, and mm-hmm. we unfortunately get stuck in, in the venues a lot. Right. And I, I try to get out and, and walk around on my own a lot of times just exploring, not knowing where I'm going. Right. So it's cool to kind of see what's going on in different parts of the country, because we may never be back to that place. Oh, yeah. You yeah. Know? I mean... There's a lot that passes us by we never see. That's what we should do. Y'all, t- y'all get on here. Y'all comment. Um, you don't know how all this works. We're we're new at it, but it's like comment. Send us an email. Podcast was it? Uh, Highway Feet Podcast at Gmail dot com. Send send an email there. Tell us where you at and uh, where we should go because I I think that'd be fun. Maybe and then when we go to these towns, we're looking for some place that does cool catering or just a cool place to eat. Yeah, some place to spotlight. Yeah. If it's a vegan place, don't even send it. I'm not going to go there. Um, <laughs> I like a good salad, but Larry's looking at it. <laughs> Man, I, I, I think I just went down a couple of notches yeah, in I don't his even, book. I don't, how we but been I friends love a good steak. Well, how about you. that? I like steak, but I like other stuff, too. I mean, uh, pad thai. Remember we got that one time? I'm, I've been getting into... What you say? Uh, yeah. Uh, what is that called? <laughs> thai food. Well, is there you got pad thai. It's in the name, but uh, is that the peanut stuff. Yep. Yeah. And then we got you know well, these rice bowl things. What do they call them? Poke bowls. Pokemon bowls. Pokemon bowls. Um, I've been kind of you know dipping my toes in there and trying trying new things. You know, I don't know who <laughs> I am anymore. But hey, he ate he ate all his green beans last week. It's true. Did he you did really? do that. Yeah. They were pretty good. I I don't know if I told you that, Stephen. I, I told him you'd be proud of him, but. I had butter, um, I had butter on them. I think but. I sampled <laughs> the uh, bacon. <laughs> I sampled vegetable lasagna in New York. Wouldn't recommend. It. I liked it. Did you? I liked. It. I like vegetable lasagna. And I like it a little sweeter. Now, I know you don't like it. But. Yeah. Well, I, it it wasn't Although, bad. I, I'll be honest. Was, it wasn't good, was but a, it wasn't bad. I, I was a bit disappointed because I, I thought you know with catering New York we were going to get a little more New Yorkness. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I was expecting some good New York food. Maybe a big pizza somewhere or something. That well, it's a little ding dong like over there. Things. He, he, uh, I said after I got done, I was, they said, well, We're going to bring after show food, but they still hadn't played Billy and them. And they had all these pizzas. And I was like, Man, I can't wait to get some of that pizza. Well, they weren't going to bring it out until after they were done. Well, I was trying to get on back. I said, Stephen, and the you think? whole show was delayed. Too. Yeah, it was delayed big time. And I was like, Well, I said, I want a pizza. He said, you want a pizza? I said, yeah. You think we can get a runner, get somebody to get one? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you want pepperoni? I was like, yeah. Well, next thing I know, Stephen had took off walking by himself. In the rain. In the rain in New York City to get me a pizza. I felt terrible. I ate the whole thing. But it was. <laughs> <laughs> and Bob and, and Brittany, our co-driver, that night, they both had him. They had one piece of pizza. You come yeah, in and get me, a piece. Me and Cambo had a piece. Yep. I ate the rest of it. And then I laid there in the bed as my stomach sloshed around, <laughs> going up and down them roads of New York City, and like to have gotten sick. But it was delicious. It was it was really good. But you know what though, I'm a I'm gonna go out there and say it. I'm a Chicago style pizza man. No, I, yeah. that is. I want a meal. You know yeah, what I mean? It, that that pizza we've I cannot remember the places we went to, but supposedly they were some of the best. Yeah. And particularly that one first time we flew in and did that little thing up there, we went somewhere near the airport or something. And man, eating one of those pieces, it was like G- eating- Giordano, G- what's it called? I can never pronounce them. Giordano's. Giordano's. Yeah. It was amazing. And it was like eating a steak. Yeah. I mean, it was so, so big. Remember and- I ordered all that food? And yeah. Calamari, let's get it all. I was like, we're going to eat at least two or three pizzas, feed us all. We couldn't even eat one. <laughs> one piece like to have killed us. But, oh, speaking of shows- had a song on a show. Watched it last night. Um, Trigger Warning. It was on Netflix. Had uh, Jessica Alba. Did y'all know that? I got a song on there? I saw, yeah. I saw a thing yeah. about it, but I didn't I didn't catch the, the title. Quitting ain't it. working. Oh, yeah. I had, a, yeah. I had a couple people reach out to me, and uh, one of them said it's the number one movie on Netflix right yeah. now. Yeah. Last uh, night, that last night was the number out. one movie. Yeah. But I had a song, and it's like 20 minutes in. She's sitting in a bar, and you just, in the background, you hear... You a background Wasn't jukebox song? Yeah, man, that's the that was the goal once upon a time. I know it was. Uh, you can you can hear the it's the very end where the harmonies, uh, uh, that little thing. Um, but it it's maybe 
I don't know, 15, 20 seconds of Did you see any working. frog hopping in the back? <laughs> I, I heard it. Um, <laughs> but My jowls flapping. Yeah. <laughs> what was that? There it is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I was like, it's always That's cool. That's cool, man. Awesome. I've had a lot of different uh, songs on you know, TV and uh, TV shows and movies and different things, but it's always cool to, to see that. And uh, what was that one show? Um, there was a fire show. A fire too. show. What was that called? Um, it's it's a big time. It's still on. It's got another yeah. season or two. But um, it was it was cool. They they played a couple of my songs there. It was Fire Country. Yeah. Fire Country. Best I got or something. Was yeah. That best was? I got was on there. Yeah, I had one on the NASCAR. I forgot about PlayStation that. game. Did you ever there. play that game? Uh, you were going by. No. I, it, yeah, I never did. We need to get it for the bus. We do. Nostalgia. That would probably have been 2019 or 20. Oh, okay. NASCAR Heat or something like that, I think is what it was. So I had one on there. We've had a couple songs on The Voice and uh, American Idol, stuff like that. Um, it's always cool, though, growing up writing songs, and you just hope somebody one day would at least listen to the words of a song. And then... You, you hope one day, man, be cool if they sang them words back to you, that something that you wrote, and then you have that, and then all of a sudden it's on TV and everything else. And I kind of wouldn't, I didn't even care to really watch the movie last night. I was just happened to go, and I seen it was a number one movie. I was like, well, I'll check it out. It was pretty good. That's always kind of cool to, you know, you had a, a song list. Didn't you on a TV show or something? Oh, like? yeah. Uh, man, I forgot all about that until, until you just said it. Uh What's it's that called one? Nashville Nights or something like that. I can't remember. Yeah. Uh, a buddy of mine from back then, his name's Anthony Billups. Yeah. He was on that show, and we had, me and him and a couple other boys had written a song together. Uh, it's called, uh, it was called All Trucked Up. Yeah. It was, when, it was. It was yeah. when all the truck songs were out. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Anthony came one day, we were at this conference or something, and he said, you know, they were, it was like classes and, and speakers and whatnot. And Anthony sat down at the table and said, uh, we call him Billups. So Billups sat down at the table and said, man, I got this hook. I've been wanting to write this song. And we got to writing that song. And we skipped the next two like speakers or whatever and finished that song. And man, it was this big thing. Like I got paid some money and it was just, mm -hmm. you know, first time that had happened. And, uh, and uh, so I was pumped up and I watched the show and it was about three seconds. So I don't even think it had any lyrics in it. And I think it was just kind of the intro of it, but yeah, it was still cool, but yeah, it was a little anticlimactic. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I got that, I got that money though. That's awesome. Most of the time that's what, what happens is you have a song, you know, in a movie or a show or whatever. It's literally in the background most of the time. Yeah. And you're like, what? I think I heard it yeah, right there. Maybe that's, that's a G trying chord. To, <laughs> trying to shine a spotlight on the hook. Or no, anything. no, no. It's it's something usually going on. Um, the only time uh, kids sing "Where I Find God" on the Voice, I think the other day, um, he uh, he sang it, did pretty good. And then Noah sang "Working Man." Noah Thompson sang "Working Man" on American Idol. He ended up winning the whole thing. That's awesome. Pretty cool. I seen he got a um, he wrote a song. It was on uh, Luke Combs' new. Record, uh, all the dad songs or whatever. Good for him. Yeah, yeah, I was I was happy for him. I was like, well, heck yeah, man! So it's always cool seeing younguns come up and good things happen to him. And he's a good good little dude. But um, but yeah, it's got about that. But yeah, last night I I checked it out. Pretty cool. Yeah, and uh, yeah, when we got some, we got a couple movies coming up that we're working on some music stuff for. So we need to get back into. Doing that. If y'all have any movies going on out there, yeah, you want some we're, music we're for it? Yeah, we're uh, we know we, we know people. <laughs> yeah, we can make something happen. But it's um, it's always funny because you're like, yeah, I'm gonna make a bunch of money off of those, and then there's so many people that got to get paid, and then the next thing you know, you're like, I didn't make any money at all. You know, <laughs> <laughs> got a song on there and didn't see a penny. But uh. The music business, yeah. You know, I guess it's about quantity, though, isn't it? You just try to pump out as much as you can. And... Yeah, I guess so. And like I said, it's it's cool when you write something, you hear that. Yeah. But um, that's still an honor, though, man, because you know that's something that a, a lot of people don't get to experience anything like that. Yeah, you know. Yeah. All right, Bible verse of the day. It's a good one. John thirteen, 
verse 34. Um, and we'll throw 35 in there. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Man, imagine if we did that. Love one another. That's crazy. It says it right here. John 13, 34 and 35. I love one another. If we love one another, we'd, this world would be a great place. And uh wouldn't be nearly as much fighting. Yeah. Well, we got uh we got some cool stuff coming up though. I mean, we're working on some me and Patrick and the photographer are talking about working up some cool content stuff and I was listening to the podcast I listened to is called uh Unashamed with Phil Robertson and and Jace and and Al and and there's got him Zach on there, but anyways, they they got a pretty cool podcast. It's it's kind of like a Bible study, but then they talk about whatever you know what we're doing, just kind of whatever's yeah. going on. They called me out the other day. Did they really? Yeah, I talked to Zach, and they made a movie called The Blind. And it's about Phil back when he was drinking and his kind of rough life leading yeah. up to where he's at now. And so they sent me a screen and I watched it. It was a really awesome movie. If y'all into movie watching go check out the blind it was it was great um but i was talking with zach and i was like yeah man listen to y'all's podcast all the time i love it and he's like Mary fleet listens to uh let's do our podcast and i was like well we gotta get him on here <laughs> so and i've been talking with their people and uh, that'd be a good time that'd so be I, fun. yeah i'm gonna go down there I'm gonna, I'm gonna get on it but we're just trying to figure out the date I told him I would like to come down and duck hunt with him. Yeah. So we're going to try to work something out. That'd be awesome. That's good content right there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we're, you know, we're doing things, you know. (laughs) People are talking to people. Yeah, people are talking to people, (laughs) but we're doing stuff. So y'all hit us up, you know, comments and uh, hit us up on uh, Les. Uh, Highway Feet Podcast at gmail.com. I'll remember it one of these days, but. Yep, send over questions, comments. If you got cool places to go eat, you know, maybe we'll go check that out. Or Sometimes you know. when we get out there, I really just see the back of the venue and the stage. Yeah, so it'd be I nice to I get out. I don't even see the front. Well, that's why we got to do theaters. something. We got to do yeah. some things because we may never be back to these places. Yeah, you know? we're very open to suggestions. Yeah. yeah, yeah, send it in. Let us know what you want to hear us talk about. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. That's a big 10-4. You're listening to Highway.